name's Pina Butterwolf, and I'm the founder of Stone Star Records. We're at Stone Star headquarters right now, which is in Highland Park, right across the street from the movie theater. For the outstanding. Yo, this is the Egyptian lover here in the Stone's Throw Studios with some antique vintage equipment up in here. Brought the 808 down, of course, some new stuff. My name is Kareem Riggins from Detroit, Michigan. Jazz drummer, hip hop producer, DJ, father. Welcome to my office. I met Peanut Butter Wolf back when I did a Greatest Hits with my friend Arabian Prince. And we hit it off right away, said he was a big fan. You know, he was somebody, when I was 15, I was like really into his music. Said his mother had brought him to one of my concerts, but it was sold out, so he just sat outside and listened to the beats and the music. And that was pretty cool. We hung out ever since then, you know, going to record shops and doing concerts together. And I told him I wanted to put out an anthology album with all my early stuff. Wolf's like, you know, we'll put out the anthology on Stone's Throw. And I was like, that's a good idea, because you have a different audience than my audience. They end up putting out the anthology has been doing well. Yeah, I had lunch with the Egyptian lover today and he was telling me about how he was at a show and this person came up to him and said, I never heard about you until this show and I'm really into it now. I'm a fan of blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's inspiring to hear, you know, that's kind of what it's all about for me. So I'm working on this new beat for a song we're gonna ready to do with Falerio. It's gonna be more like a, I need a freak, my beat goes boom kind of track. So it's gonna be something like this. Anything that's not on your laptop at home, it's a good step toward making better music. You rarely see like a really killing in-house studio. Since we've had the studio, I've noticed a lot of the artists on Stone's Throw are like collaborating or like getting to know each other, you know? So to me, that's like a healthy environment. Like it creates more interesting music. Yes. The studio is something I've always wanted to do, but never really had the time to do it, and it was just a matter of finding a guy. Do I look beautiful? Thanks. Jake, who runs our studio, he spends as much time looking at gear as I do looking at records, so it gives me more time to look at records. I like it to feel very like approachable. Everything's set up, everything's ready to go. There's no like weird kind of spaceship vibes so much in here. It just, you know, wanted to feel like uh, like home or like you know, your mom's house or something, I guess. Gear-wise, it's a different story. I did not want it to be like a bedroom, gear-wise. There's a lot of, you know, fun, vintage synths and stuff that Chris and the Stone Throw family have collected over the years. Uh, some of my personal ones in here too. Juno 106, Krumar, is like a famous picture of Mad Lib with the Krumar and stuff. The DJ setup is super important at Stone's Throw. It's a very kind of DJ heavy collective of artists and sample heavy as well. MCI two track tape machine. It's kind of like a mastering deck, quarter inch tape. To be honest, never gets used. I wish it was used more, but it's a pain in the ass to record to tape and to master to tape and all this stuff. But it sounds great if anybody would ever use it. This is our uh, mastering rig, you know, high-end compressors and EQs. The centerpiece of the studio is this API 1608 console. It's a really versatile console. We do a lot of uh, post-production work here, or I do, video mixing and mastering for other labels. I think the analog gear makes this place very unique. The, the size of the room, it's not too big, and it's just warm, it's a warm sound in here. You know, and that's important for, for making music. My name is Sudan Archives. I play the violin, but I also produce my own beats and sing. Sudan is working on her record with Matthew in here. They've been kind of like from the ground up, one of the first records cut completely within these walls, you know, the, from recording to mixing and eventually mastering. It's honestly been an honor because I just came from Ohio from my mom's basement making like beats on my iPad, you know? I don't really have like the skills to mix my, my tracks the way I want them. So working with Matthew David, I'm very grateful. I just come in the studio and I usually have like 25 stems and he just like takes each stem and mixes them in front of me. And I'm like, oh, I like how that sounds. Or oh, can you like turn that down a little bit? 
the way I vision my music is actually going into that direction now because I'm here. I want artists to be able to start a record in here knowing that you know they have a fully like world-class recording chain, be able to mix it in here on a nice console, and have you know a pretty good mastering environment as well. to Los Angeles when I was 19. And that was my first time getting on an airplane. <laughs> I came to LA with just a violin and like three outfits. And I think it's amazing that, you know, someone from Stone's Throw reached out to me and they wanted to hear my music. And just one song got me signed. So I have a team now and a place to record. I'm just very grateful. I'm very appreciative of being on such a powerful label and inspiring label. I think it's important for drummers to warm up so you don't get tendonitis and hand problems. And you're also working out the rhythms that you're going to play. The music, is, it keeps going so you can't miss a beat. I make a lot of beats while traveling, airplane beats, train beats, you know. And when I finally compiled everything for Alone Together, they mastered it here. It was pretty much the same process for Head Not Sweet. I played a lot of live drums, bass, and piano and stuff like that on there. And it was also mastered here. It's really, yeah, early days for our studio, but it's looking really promising. Lately, we've been working on the No Worries remix record. Knowledge has been in here and, and doing some mixing for that. Dean Blunt has been in here this month a few times. The most recent Mild High Club record was mixed in here. Hi, I'm Alex. I have a band called the Mild High Club. First met Wolf, I was like in his library of vinyl, which is just like a room, floor to ceiling, full of vinyl. And uh, that's when I was like, okay, these people love music. This is good, this is a good place to be. Him being a DJ and him Loving music is what makes him the great owner of Stone's Throw. I've wanted to have a jukebox for a long time, and I guess maybe a lot of people my age had the same dream, but the records that I put in here were all like records I bought from the age of 10 to the age of 13, so. There was a radio station, KSOL, that played all this stuff, and then there was a roller skating rink called um, Hellskate, where I would go to, and everyone would like dance with their roller skates, you know, like they call it Rexing. So, that was the era. So, this is the roof of the studio here in Highland Park. Not much up here, except for the air conditioner. I have to come up here and change it every time the season changes, so I uh, find myself up here pretty often. are all great artists. We all push each other to be better. Being surrounded by people who make really great music is, is definitely encouraging to push yourself to another level. Families work together to, to be better. That's what the situation is here. Wolf is like my brother, and we hang out and we just have fun. It's the family of Stone's Throw. I want to push out there to, to the youth, like continue to create and submit your music to labels. Stone's Throw is a great label to submit your music to and this is a great platform to be heard. My son is inspired by Stone's Throw and wants to put out music on there, and that says a lot about a label that's been around for a long time. <laughs>